Hello everyone, welcome back to the Plunder Den. In this week's episode, we're going to construct a gatehouse and a fortification wall uh, for that blockhouse that we built in our last couple episodes. So I built that blockhouse and I, you know, I had a bit of a wall uh, and I was really using a Palisade uh, fortification uh, model that uh, Firelock Game sells, uh, which is a great uh, miniature, by the way. This is a piece of it uh, that I painted up. And uh, so I kind of use this as an inspiration into uh, creating the rest of the fortification that I wanted. So I could use this piece in conjunction with uh, the uh, other wall that I've constructed uh, and use it in the overall piece with the blockhouse. So kind of have a frontier kind of uh, fortification. So it's going to be a little hard to show you the finished product here. I'm going to show you it's in four sections. Uh, so we really have the gatehouse here. This is it right here, and this comes off, and it's similar to the blockhouse. Uh, as you can see, I put little little bits on there to to hold it into place, uh, as well as the bottom of this, I have little bits on there to uh, hold it onto the rest of the uh, gateway. So then I have the one section of the wall, which is right here, uh, and you can see we got our doorway here, uh, and uh, <clears throat> kind of added these little extra extensions for where the cannons sit. Uh, you have to recoil, they have a place to go, uh, it's not right on the edge of the wall here, so I have a little bit more room, uh, and uh, this is the uh, extension on here, so I, I kind of looked at a lot of different pictures of fortifications uh, and gateways, uh, and kind of took a mixture of them really uh, to build this, uh, so this would sit on here like this, um, the best way to show you is probably was half, uh, and then I have this other section here, uh, and uh, it's a, quite a larger section. So kind of went with like a star pattern. Uh, I'm hoping to build a second one of these that uh, would be on the other end of the fort, but uh, we're just going to cover the one section. Uh, I think uh, that'll be sufficient because it'll be built the same way when I built the second half. All right, so then uh, as you can see, I got a... I kind of made a, like a locking me mechanism on this door so they connect together the two fortification pieces uh, and then you have one solid wall that the uh, gatehouse sits in. So that's what we're constructing in this episode. Uh, unfortunately it took a lot longer, similar to the uh, uh, the blockhouse and uh, I wasn't able to paint it so that'll be next week's episode. We'll do a painting tutorial of the whole thing. Uh, and then we'll move on to something else. I know we've done fortifications for a couple of weeks now, and uh, we'll move on to a different uh, different project after that. All right, uh, if you guys like what we're doing here in the Plunder Den, make sure you smash that like button and consider subscribing to the Plunder Den and get first-hand information on when I start these kind of projects. All right, everyone, let's get down to the table and let's start crafting. Okay, I started uh, by cutting out uh, some insulation foam and the uh, shape of the wall I wanted. Uh, I kind of uh, modeled a little bit after the Firelock Games Palisade uh, Fort they have uh, for the outer wall. And uh, to, to texturize the outside, I just used a tinfoil ball and uh, this dowel. I carved a brick pattern all the way around uh, the edges. That's the plan. So originally I was going to use some dollar store foam board to uh, base it, um, but I decided to uh, opt against that. Uh, and uh, I used dowels that I plan on using for the outer wall, and I'm just showing you the popsicle sticks for the top. So normally I would base it, uh, but I decided to be a lot more mobile if I didn't actually use that uh, dollar store foam board. So I opted against it. So this is after I've already uh, completed uh, the work with the dowel. And I have all my brick pattern. Happy with that. Uh, and uh, I moved on to texturizing the popsicle sticks. Uh, so that took some time uh, because I'm still using a, a cobby knife to do it. Um, I was trying to use a, a wire brush, uh, but I found the bristles weren't uh, coarse enough. So I'm going to have to look at maybe getting a different uh, different brush. Uh, but from now, I, I use the uh, X-Acto knife. So then I made some stairs out of uh, the same insulation foam. I uh, put the same brick pattern on it. 
Uh, and right here, I'm just showing you, I measured it out. Uh, I used some cavalry here, a little taller mini. Uh, and I figured if I get it high enough above that, that would be a good uh, height for the gateway. So I plan on doing everything with uh, tacky glue. That's what I plan on gluing everything together with. Uh, I'm just showing you that's uh, what I plan on doing. So I added a little step also on the bottom. So it makes sense that you climb up that step to get onto the wall and then up the stairs. Uh, and then I plan on adding the popsicle sticks to the entire top. I'm just showing you. All right, so I decided uh, while I was putting those popsicle sticks on to add these longer pieces. Kind of uh, like where your gun would recoil on. There would be a little space on the gun ports. So I'm just showing you I plan on adding it to all the gun ports. Um, just an extra detail I wanted to add on there. And not just have a narrow walkway where the cannons would be sitting. So this is one of the dowels that I uh, carved up. I carved the uh, tips on it, a uh, pointy tip, and then I carved the sides just to give it a more uh, rustic feel. It made it look more like a real timber uh, than just putting a dowel. Otherwise, it looks too smooth and it looks like a dowel. And I wanted to have that texture, which will really pay off in the paint tutorial on it, adding that extra texture. So I'm just showing you I plan on putting it all the way around the wall. So here's a, a few examples of ones I've completed. You can see that it looks more like a timber with those carved edges and little chunks of uh, wood sticking out. It just made it look like a real carved piece of wood. Uh, measuring out uh, the opening that I cut the tips off of, that's where I plan on doing for where the cannons are. Uh, and then I measured uh, one of my minis uh, muskets, uh, making sure that it just goes over the top of the spikes there uh, to make sure I have the right height uh, for all my sticks before I glue them all on. <laughs> i got to use those as a, as a measure. But I did make some variations. It looks like they're pretty, uh, you know, unison, uh, the same size, but I decided to make a few of them a little bit taller, a little bit shorter. Uh, of course, there's taller pieces in front of the stairwells too. Uh, then I decided to build these supports to hold the gatehouse. Um, and most of the historical pictures I saw of gatehouses, uh, they kind of had an overhang over the door. Uh, and I kind of want to capture that. So I built these balsa wood supports. Added some more trim to the bottom. Uh, just kind of more of a you know design choice, really. It just kind of finishes everything off around the base there. Uh, and then for the doors, I decided to use foam. Uh, I'm going to carve that. Uh, to measure the uh, opening here, I used this wagon. Again, just using my minis just to measure it. So I figured I should at least be able to get a wagon through there. Uh, and then I planned on using that dowel again. Uh, and I just drew uh, the uh, wood timber pattern onto these uh, pieces of foam. Uh, I just wanted to have a more exaggerated doorway. Uh, than the rest of the building. So then I got some matchsticks, uh, some scrap wood, and uh, these are coffee stir sticks. And I kind of made a kind of like wrought iron uh, supports on there and kind of a, like a locking device. Uh, just, you know, added a little detail in there. Like that would be a locking device for the main door. And then I added these uh, little, like I would say a bumper on the back uh, for where the cannon would recoil into. And then you can see I put some supports underneath it. Uh, to support that whole uh, piece. Just adding extra detail to add more interest to the overall piece. So now I move to building the gatehouse. Uh, and this is very similar to the blockhouse. Uh, I did carve the bottom, as you can see, uh, with a timber kind of pattern on the bottom. And then I plan on uh, putting the four corners with that uh, balsa wood. Uh, and then I'm going to put it around the edges of the bottom too as well. Now when you're measuring that front uh, wall, make sure you uh, take consideration the widths of the uh, balsa wood as well. Uh, plan again, I keep showing you the tacky glue, but <laughs> that's what I plan on gluing it together. Now that smaller piece I have there is actually the two sides. Uh, I'm only going to go right up to the, where the stairwell comes, uh, so you want an opening there. Uh, and then I plan on adding uh, popsicle sticks to the entire thing. So this is after I've added the walls on. I've kind of put the balsa wood frame. I decided to build a, a balcony. Uh, again, looking at historical pictures, a lot of them had a balcony on the back facing into the fort, so I added that detail. Uh, and then I used balsa wood to frame out the main center window. Uh, and then I plan on putting popsicle sticks around the rest of the entire piece. 
So then again, I take my mini to make sure that uh, they can fit easily through that gun port. Always use a popsicle stick underneath to, you know, just add that extra height to make sure you're, you got your measurements correct there. Uh, and then I'm just showing you the planks again. I'm going to put it all through uh, out. So this is after I've completed adding all the popsicle sticks in. Uh, I did add a few match sticks in there. Uh, as a you know, they didn't measure out quite quite white, uh, so I had to add a little bit of uh, uh, matchsticks in there just to fill around the windows and the gun ports. And then I moved to the roof. So this is just dollar store foam board. I cut it into some triangles. Uh, this roof is a little rectangle, so it was a little more difficult. I probably in the future would have made it, it would have been better if I just made a perfect square, uh, but it ended up being a little bit of a rectangle. Uh, and then uh, that's uh, cardstock uh, shingles that I've made in previous episodes uh, to uh, cover the entire roof. Now I kind of beveled or, or edged the uh, these triangles just so they glue together better. Um, and they fit nicely. They didn't fit completely snugly, uh, but it's okay because you're going to add uh, uh, you know shingles over top of them and you, you'll be able to fill in those gaps with the shingles. So this is after uh, I've started the shingles, just kind of showing you kind of a checkpoint. Uh, you can see I put balsa wood around the bottom edge of the entire piece. Uh, and then I plan on building the shingles up on all four sides. Uh, and then the edges, all I do is use smaller shingles, bend it over a dowel so it's rounded. Uh, and then I glue them over the edges so that will, will cover it. So you don't have to worry about if there's a gap or not. So then I added uh, two small, kind of like little, it looked like little timbers on the bottom. Uh, and that's really just to hold uh, this uh, house from slipping off the front, essentially. The uh, gatehouse here from slipping off the front of this uh, piece. Uh, it's just pretty good on the support. I didn't really need to add too much. So there's the uh, corner pieces I was talking about uh, and filling out the gaps. And then I also added all these little timbers to the bottom of this roof. Uh, and this definitely uh, is going to match the, the blockhouse, so it's a part of the same build, and everything looks like it's part of the same world or same architectural design. Uh, and it also uh, helps keep the roof on. So I wanted to make sure that roof was open so I can easily put my minis into that uh, gatehouse. All right, so that's pretty much the, the build here. Let's take a look at uh, these uh, French militia invaders. We got some Canadian French militia and native warriors uh, sieging this. Uh, I would call it a fortification now. It's not, uh, you know, it's uh, more of a fortress. It's got walls now and a blockhouse. So uh, kind of just keep adding components uh, to this piece. Uh, and you can see there's uh, some of the uh, Firelock Games uh, uh, Palestine uh, fort walls there. It kind of matches really well with this. Uh, I'm probably going to plan on getting some more of that to, just to add into the side walls. And, uh, it, it is time consuming building these walls, but I do plan on building another secondary component on the back. So just giving you a good look at the gatehouse um, and just showing you with all the minis added on uh, what it looks like. Uh, there's the, there's uh, the blockhouse. And just giving you a, a pass through the entire fortress. So I'm hoping in the future, maybe uh, coming up with a scenario where uh, maybe the defenders start inside the fortress and they breach the walls already and then the defenders have to uh, stop them from from that point. And maybe there's, it was a surprise attack. So anyways, I'm working on some uh, new possibilities there, but uh, I'm really happy with uh, how this turned out uh, and I can't wait to paint it. All right, if you guys like what we're doing here in the Planet Inn, make sure you smash that like button and consider subscribing to the Planet Inn. Get first-hand information on when we start these kind of projects. All right, everyone, thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.